Hi, thanks for watching another episode of our Love Where You Live series. My name is Mia Farrell. I'm a designer at ACO and I am here to do just that, help you love where you live. We are taking you start to finish through a remodel in our Love Where You Live series, and today is plumbing finish day. Super excited to have Dustin Osborne fun. here. Thank you so much. getting this kitchen back up and running today. Very excited to get some functionality in this space. It'd be nice for the client. Yeah, for sure. So let's go back in time a little bit to okay. rough in day and we'll talk about kind of what it took to get us here. Okay, when we first uh, showed up, we noticed that there was a couple of different issues that uh, we had with the plumbing. Yeah. One, we had a vent that was coming out of the wall that because of a bulkhead, they made an easier route. Yeah, for so we, sure. We wanted to, we always wanted to get the bulkhead out, right? Yep. Want nice taller cabinets that go to the ceiling, get that bulkhead out of there, but there's always something in it. Yep. So we found the plumbing that we had to move. Absolutely. So we were able to route that back up so we could have a nice clean finish. Yeah, that's great. And so another part of the design that we had was a farmhouse sink. Yes. So tell me what we have to consider when we're selecting a sink like that. So the biggest thing when we're selecting, when you're selecting a sink like that is the height of the drain. Yeah. We have to account for the garbage disposal and the, the tallness of the sink mm -hmm. or the depth of the sink so we can plumb the drain to where it hooks up perfectly. Yeah, one of the things that we do on the front end is kind of take note of where the plumbing is, take some photos underneath the cabinet and get some measurements so that we um, know what all we have to do going Absolutely. into it. Absolutely. So all of that was done to make the design functional, but you know, when we have everything torn apart and we're thinking about some of the things that the homeowner not only wants for the new kitchen, but maybe some things in the future, it's like absolutely. now's the time to do it, right? Perfectly, absolutely. So there were some other things that we did. Absolutely. So we had a uh, gas line that we ran, was able to uh, cut the floor up and hook on in the mechanical room so they have a gas line in case they ever wanted to put a gas range in. Yeah, yeah, or maybe even like a gas grill gas out on the grill. patio. Yep, the absolutely. patio is right off the kitchen, so that would be a really nice addition yes. later. Um, so tell us a little bit about what a homeowner can expect when we're in that kind of messy, torn up phase of plumbing. Well, obviously a lot of dust. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're cutting up a, a, some flooring, we're, we're pulling some pipes out. You know, you're, obs you're obviously going to have water off for an extended period of time. Sure. Sometimes it could be an entire day. Sometimes it's just a couple hours here or there. Okay, yeah. Um, the other thing that you really got to watch out for is, is when you're opening floors up, you come across sometimes the unexpected. Yep. And those unexpected can lead to other price inc increases. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that we like to do on the front end is try to uh, get some context clues of the space so we can account for some of those things yep. ahead of time. But you know, even with our years of experience and all of that, unfortunately we don't have x-ray vision. So absolutely. <laughs> our change order guarantee does help homeowners in those kinds of situations, um, but they do happen. Yes, they so. do. So when we get to the fun part though, let's talk about putting this kitchen back together. All right, perfect. What all are you guys doing today? So Andrew is installing the faucet, the sink, garbage disposal, and the dishwasher. Oh my gosh. So when he is finished up, they'll have <laughs> a, an absolute running kitchen. Oh, that's fantastic news. It's been a minute. And so I know that the homeowner is really excited to have their kitchen back, to be able to use the sink in the space and not have to wash dis dishes in another bathroom. So it's a very exciting day here. It is very much so. <laughs> We're gonna talk a little bit more too about some of the electrical components that we have going on in this project. I am now joined by Joe Felick, our electrician on this project, so we can talk a little bit more about what's happening on the electrical side of things. Thanks mm -hmm. for being here. Absolutely. Appreciate it me. very much. We love having you guys on site. And uh, you know, a lot of times plumbing and electrical work kind of go in conjunction with one another. Mm -hmm. Way back when we were in the rough-in phase, you guys were all here at the same time, lots of bustling activity. It was really yeah. cool to see everything just kind of happening. Um, but that's the kind of stuff that's hard to really understand what's going on <laughs> because it's all torn up and there's mm -hmm. wiring and there's plumbing and there's guys all over the place. Um, so let's talk about what homeowners can expect when an electrician is working in their home. You can expect a little bit of organized chaos. Sure. Um, when you, if you're not familiar with, um, with remodels, it can look a little daunting or overwhelming. Um, between cutting holes in drywall and drilling, drilling through studs and through, through your wall or through your ceilings um, to get the wiring ran, it, it's overwhelming for some people. Um, but it's, 
all done in a professional manner to get a beautiful finished product. Um, we work really hard on the pre-construction to know exactly what we're going to expect right. um, early on so that us as the project managers and also the employees coming into the project know what we're going to be walking into. Yeah, I always appreciate that during our scope review process, you guys are able to say, okay, in order to do this, I need to cut this many holes and they're gonna be this size. And so then the drywall guy can say, okay, great, I can patch that many holes. So we have a plan going into it, um, but it can be a little jarring to have somebody come into your home and cut holes. Absolutely. <laughs> but it's gotta Absolutely. be done and like, it, Obviously, at the end, you know, things come back together mm -hmm. and we put it back together. <laughs> yes. So the, 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 when it all starts, it gets a little wild. But as we work through the process and get everything done as far as mechanicals go, drywall comes in. And before you know it, cabinets are in and it's, a, it's looking more like a kitchen. Yeah. You get your, ca your, your countertops in. And it, you can't take a breath of, of relief after that. Yes. Mechanicals are always the craziest part of any kind of remodel, um, just because there's a lot of things going on between, between HVAC, plumbing and electrical. Yeah. Um, a lot of different things have to move to, to make, to go from um, one space to another to, yeah. to reconfigure a kitchen or a bathroom. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you're in, in that phase and you're running wiring, at what point do we need to turn the power off? And for how long? I mean, how long can people be expected to, you know, live in a home that's completely torn up? <laughs> yeah. So typically you're only going to have power off for the days that we are there working. Sure. Um, very rarely do we ever run into a situation where we have to leave power off after we've left. Um, we safety things off. We can put things in boxes. Um, we protect the wiring so that no one can get hurt or, or anything can get damaged. Um, so that you're not without your living space. Right. No one wants to walk in after work, go to turn on their lights in the living room, and yeah. they don't turn on. Yeah. Um, many different stages of wiring over the years, depending on what age your home is, it can all depend on how much wire, how much power gets turned off in the house. Um, but we we work really hard to make sure that you are not without the rest of your home during the renovation. Um, right, especially this day and age with people working from home and that <laughs> kind of thing. There's so many people that are at home during a remodel. So having those considerations in place is really important. That is actually something that I bring up when we when we start any renovation yeah. is, is anyone working in the house yeah. and where's your router at? So that right. we can make yeah. sure either it's only off temporarily yeah. or we can run an extension cord to it to make sure that you're you're able to still work. The last sure. thing we want to do is have you not being able to work while we're in Right, although some people might like the excuse. <laughs> oh, no, and we can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> Write a little note, it's fine. So let's talk about this project in particular. Mm -hmm. We had a bulkhead and when we were talking about plumbing, we talked about some plumbing that we had to move. Mm -hmm. We also found some wiring, of course. So let's talk about that. Always. Um, I don't think I've opened up a bulkhead <laughs> yet in my career where there's no wiring. Right. Um, I would be very surprised yeah, in all honesty. Yeah. Uh, so kitchens and bathrooms, for some reason, when, when bulkheads were created in the industry, electricians love to run wiring yes. in them. I understand the ease of it. <laughs> exactly, path of least resistance. It makes it very easy to get your wiring ran. Unfortunately for us, when we remove that bulkhead, yeah. it creates a little bit of a headache for us. Um, thankfully, we walk into it though with the with the pre construction that we do and the planning that we yeah. do beforehand. Most of the time, we know exactly what we're going to we run into. Um, yeah, we're, we're, and we also, probably one of the biggest things, we always look to where the panel is at. Yep. The panel is way on the other side of the house. We have a pretty good chance that there's not going to be a ton in there. Mm -hmm. um, but until we actually get it open, we, we just don't yeah. know. And another one of the things that we did, in, very specifically on this project, um, we had a central light fixture in the middle of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And instead of that central light fixture, we came in with four can lights. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that, that we used was a nice little thin yeah, a wafer light. light. Yeah, yeah, so that we can have a little bit more flexibility on where we put them, right? Yeah, so I mean, I, I consider this still new technology. It's been around for a couple of years, but these lights are awesome. Um, they are UL listed to go right into the ceiling. They have a junction box already attached to them that converts it over to low voltage. Um, almost every one of them nowadays has a different Kelvin rating. So you can actually change the, the color temperature right. of the light, um, which I really love personally because then we can install these at finish with all your countertops in, your cabinets in, your flooring done, and pick the lighting color that works best for the space. Because yeah. everyone likes something different. Yeah. Um, but one of the greatest features that I love about these lights is they're only a half inch thick. Right. So not very often is there an instance where we cannot put a can light where you want a can light. Yeah, that's great. So it, it's, it, it minimizes the amount of drywall that we have to cut um, and it allows us to be able to put a light anywhere in the space. Yeah, that's great. I like that as a designer. That makes mm -hmm. me very happy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, moving on to today. Today mm -hmm. is finished day. So what all is happening here? 
So we have under cabinet lighting that is going in. We have all of our plugs and switches that are going in. Um, we of course have to get ready for appliances. Correct. That's the yes. next thing, or one of the next things that's on the list. Yeah. Um, electrical finish is always gonna happen, or usually gonna happen before appliances. So we have to get those outlets and the wiring in place right. for, the, for the appliance guys to bring their stuff in and be able to hook it up. Yeah. So you can go back to having a more functional kitchen. Yeah, just day by day, things get more and more functional over here. Mm. So this mechanical finish day is very exciting. We appreciate having you to partner with. Thanks so much for being here. And just keep following along with our journey to get to the end of this, uh, this beautiful kitchen remodel and transformation. <laughs>